You may have heard about fermented food and its benefits, but are wondering just what is fermentation? Many have grown up in a culture of fermented foods, while others, like myself, have not. Once our culture started heading towards packaging and preserving with chemicals, we left this process behind. So what is fermentation exactly? It basically comes down to a way of preserving food. But to get more technical, fermentation is the process of sugars being consumed because oxygen is unavailable. The result or products of this are acids, gases, and alcohol. This process occurs in both yeast and bacteria. People have been fermenting for thousands of years, both food and drinks. So it's a safe and traditional way to preserve your food. It just seems to be new to our modern era. Everyday versus scientific de definitions are a bit different when it comes to fermentation. And because I'm a bit of a foodie focused on the food aspect, I, I like <laughs> the everyday uh, definition. But what it is is the preservation methods for food via microorganisms. So the microorganisms are the bacteria or yeast or good bugs or people call it all sorts of things. But for a scientist, the definition is a bit more technical. So fermentation is any metabolic process that releases energy from a sugar or other organic molecule, does not require oxygen or an electron electron transport system, and uses an organic molecule as the final electron acceptor. Okay, so on to the examples of fermentation, of which there are many. Kimchi is one. So if you haven't heard of it, you perhaps haven't met someone who's Korean, because Koreans are passionate about their kimchi. They love it. It's a spicy fermented cabbage with other ingredients like green onion, garlic, fish sauce, radish, things like that. Oh, don't forget the chili. Pickles can be fermented. Sauerkraut is another classic one. Kefir and yogurt are milk products that are fermented, so you can ferment milk. And kombucha is a fermented sweet tea, so it's basically sugar and tea, black or green or whatever. And um, it's fermented using a specific starter culture. So how do you actually go about fermenting things? There are three main ways. The first one is salt. So when you're talking vegetables, salt is often used, especially in sauerkraut. There are starter cultures like wild yeast for a sourdough. So you can catch yeast in the year, in the air and uh, with a bit of water and flour and make a starter like that. There is whey that's from fermented milk. That's like, you know, the liquid on top of yogurt, that's way. You can buy a commercial starter culture, which is probably the way to go if you're vegan or you don't want to have any dairy products. Um, there, there are non-animal product starter cultures that way. You can use the leftover liquid from another batch of fermented food. So if you ever bought sauerkraut or something like that from a shop, then you could use the leftover liquid to start your batch. And there are also what we call grains, but it's not actually a grain, but so kefir or water kefir, things like that. We use kefir grains and it's not, it's not actually a grain, it's a little blob of stuff like a scoby. So scoby is the next one. And with kombucha, scoby is used um, and it's another blobby type jelly thing. It's a bit weird looking. And um, what it is, is a symbiotic culture of bacteria and yeast. So that's what's used. People can call it a mother culture or, uh, what's the other thing I was thinking of? Mushroom. Yeah, that's it. And, um, okay, so you can ferment in a number of different ways and in different places, like your stomach, which isn't necessarily ideal. But um, yeast and bacteria are what does the fermenting and they do it a bit differently. So yeast changes sugar into alcohol, bacteria changes sugar into lactic acid. So for food, we usually eat lacto-fermented food because it's got lactic acid. Okay, so some people are wondering when they're just learning about this, is it difficult to ferment? And it it can be a learning curve depending on what you want to ferment. 
Um, but after a while, you just kind of get used to it. There are some things that are quite a bit easier. So if you're just starting out, you just need to follow a recipe. And you can just find a basic sauerkraut recipe and just salt and cabbage. And all you need to do is chop it and mix it and press it down. You know, there's a few different techniques. So I, I'd recommend another YouTube video just to learn you know some of the techniques but it's really not very difficult and what you need to ferment you can start with a basic glass jar that has a lid some things don't even need a lid but uh, usually for food you do need a lid and that's how I started you will be more successful if you ferment in large batches rather than small batches that's my personal experience um, so when we had a fermented food company, our large batches always did fine, but when we're, we're not selling it anymore, we're just making it for ourselves in small batches, it's a bit more uh, difficult to have them turn out successful. So that's why I generally recommend fermenting in a large batch, and the ideal way to do that is through using a crock. And if you would like to see which crock I recommend, go to firmaculture.com and you can learn more about fermenting or you can check out the crock, which is, you know, an excellent way to go. And um, that's basically it. So ferment fermentation is preserving your food using lactic acid by letting the bacteria and yeast eat the sugar in the food and they can't get at the oxygen. They release